To find the next contender in our countdown of extreme loudmouths, take a trip into the frozen heart of a Minnesota wilderness. You'll need some good boots, a thick jacket, and a very loud mouth. These people have paid for a chance to communicate with wolves. In good conditions, howling wolves can be heard 16 kilometers away. They need to be real loudmouths because their territory can extend over 260 square kilometers. Wolves are number eight in the countdown because their howls are very loud and very complex. Each wolf in the pack can identify the others based on call alone. Since the pack is the center of a wolf's universe, howling is the glue that keeps the individuals together. Researchers have discovered that the loudest howls are produced by many wolves in chorus. The wavering calls and rapid changes in pitch make it difficult to distinguish the number of individuals calling. Then, as the sound travels through the wilderness, it's further distorted as it bounces around trees, ridges, and valleys. This can make it hard to work out just how big the pack is which is a nice trick if you're vastly outnumbered. Strangely enough, this phenomenon can be linked to the story of a man who died in the Sahara Desert. Back in 1924, author P.C. Wren wrote a novel about a young Englishman who joined the French Foreign Legion. Unfortunately, his small troop became trapped in a fort by a vastly superior force of Tuareg fighters. To disguise their weakness, the defenders propped up dead soldiers in the parapets and made so much noise that the attackers thought there was a full garrison defending the fort. The story was called Beau Jest. By mixing up their chorus of howls, Wolves use the bow jest effect to confuse rival packs. By sounding like a much bigger pack, these loudmouths may be able to scare off their enemies. It's a clever trick, but in a forest on the other side of the world, there's another animal that guards its territory by making an even louder noise. In South and Central America, the next contender in our countdown of extreme loudmouths is very protective about the fruit trees in its territory. In fact, it has the noisiest security system in the forest. It's easy to see how the howler monkey got its name. These loudmouths howl to mark their territory and to intimidate rival troops. Even listening from down at ground level would be like having your ear next to a blender at full speed. The secret to the howler monkey's vocal volume is in its swollen throat. Unlike humans, the monkey has a special bony pouch extending off the voice box that acts as a resonating chamber amplifying the howls. These chambers are bigger in the males than the females, so the male calls are much louder and deeper. 
But howler monkeys aren't the only loudmouths that can upset their neighbors. More than a third of adult Americans snore. It can be a real problem, especially when some people can generate snores as loud as a howler monkey. The trouble starts during deep sleep, when the muscles in the roof of the mouth, tongue, and throat relax. If they get too floppy, they strike each other and vibrate during breathing. The more narrow the airway, the more forceful the airflow becomes. Tissue vibration increases, and the snoring grows louder. While these loudmouths are definitely not welcome in the bedroom, they'd be right at home in the forests of South America. However, not even the howler monkey's throat pouch can compete with our next contender. It amplifies its calls in a resonating chamber that's three meters long. In the heat of battle, there was a time when the bugle was the perfect way of signaling that it was time to attack. And our next contender also uses a loud trumpet blast to signal its charge. Stampeding into number six in the countdown is the elephant. Perhaps it's not surprising that the world's biggest land animal also makes a lot of noise. Elephants have more than 25 different calls. The sound comes from air blasted out of their enormous lungs and channeled through the trunk, a three meter long resonating chamber. These calls are so loud they could drown out a jackhammer. But elephants can also make calls that travel 10 times farther. Scientists recently discovered that, just like alligators, elephants produce noise in such low frequency, we need recording equipment to hear them. The secret language of elephants is revealed when we play those noises back at higher speed. These low-frequency calls are elephant infrasound. They produce these rumbles inside a cavity at the base of the tongue. The low wavelengths produced travel greater distances because they're less easily scattered by obstacles on the way to neighboring herds. This way, an individual can broadcast a message over an area of 280 square kilometers. But that's nothing compared to some other gigantic producers of infrasound. When volcanoes erupt, they move large volumes of air, which in turn generates ultra-low frequency sound waves that can travel halfway around the world. In fact, scientists are only just discovering that all kinds of natural disasters produce infrasound including the one that hit Thailand on the day after Christmas 2004. The morning started out like any other. Many tourists went shopping. Others chose to see the sights with a relaxing elephant ride. None of them knew that on that day, one of the safest places to be was on the back of an elephant. Early that morning, the islands were bathed in infrasound and the first to know were the elephants. The elephants heard something big approaching from out at sea. According to eyewitnesses, ignoring the orders of their owners, they turned around and headed inland, taking their tourists with them. A few moments later, the people realized why. Look at the waves coming, clear out people! Get in the room, get in the room, get in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, it's okay, girls. A 
tsunami is a generator of infrasound because the up and down movements of the waves act as a giant loudspeaker, pushing the air at infrasonic frequencies which, luckily for some tourists, can be detected by elephants. However, we have no trouble hearing the elephant's deafening trumpet or the screech of our next contender. It's a loud mouth that's so noisy, it has to use built-in earmuffs so it doesn't go deaf. If you thought trumpeting elephants and howling monkeys were loud, then break out the earplugs, because crawling up next is a bug so noisy that it terrorizes entire cities. And later, why would anyone want a car stereo that's so loud it could kill?